Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film Scare Package 2, Rad Chad's Revenge. It's a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, December 22nd. So this is a no-spoiler review. Uh, I will say off the bat, I was a fan of the first Scare Package. So this has been highly anticipated for me for the year, because I figured it was coming to Shudder at some point since it was on Shudder, the first one was. I actually bought the Blu-ray of the first one, that's how much I enjoyed it. Now, that said, it's obviously an anthology film, like the first one was, so there will be, you know, ones that people will really like, ones that people won't won't like, and in between. So, overall, I will say right now that I enjoyed it enough. Um, I think maybe my expectations were a little too high. It's tough because Scare Package kind of, like, came out of nowhere, and it was kind of this surprise, cool, comedic thing. And, um, yeah, I think the surprise element of it kind of, like, drove my enjoyment up a lot. So, going into a sequel, I already have an expectation that was built off the first one. So, I don't think it's as good as the first one. Do I think it's a decent follow-up to the first one? Pretty decent. Uh, one of my biggest issues with the film, though, is there's a lot of humor in it that just does not land. It seems a little random, some of the funny things they put in there, and they just, they're not funny. Um, maybe it's just me, uh, but I just, I found a lot of, like, kind of random stuff in there, and I was like, I don't understand these choices. But, it's not all like that. There are good moments as well, and I do think that going into the end of the film, probably, like, the last, actually, the last, like, half hour, maybe 45 minutes, I think, is the best part of the film, for the most part. But, I'm gonna go through each of the shorts, including the wraparound short, Tell you who did them, tell you the good and the bad with them, and yeah. So overall, uh, it's a familiar situation, obviously. If you've seen the first Scare Package, which I highly recommend, a lot of stuff will feel familiar. You will see familiar faces in this from the get-go. So there's a lot of kind of nostalgia fun for that, even though it's only, you know, it's only been like a year since the last Scare Package, but you know. Uh, there's a solid series of recap flashbacks that they put in the beginning that remind you what happened. So that is helpful to kind of like jog your memory and be like, oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. this is where we left off before. Because it is connected, obviously. Like, story-wise, there is stuff that connects. So that's good. Uh, Rad Chad's Revenge. This is the first one I'm reviewing. This is the wraparound one that you would assume because that's the actual title. This one's written and directed by Aaron B. Koontz who did Camera Obscura, Scare Package, the original, and The Pale Door. Uh, this one does a good job setting up the material that will end up tying everything together. I think they did a very effective job of kind of setting the stage and being like, okay, this is the overall story we're playing with here. This is how everything being shown to you, all these shorts, will actually tie together and kind of make sense. So they did a good job with that. There's one particular character I did not get in this one, and I just don't understand why they're in it, don't really make a lot of sense, they're supposed to be, like, ridiculous funny, I think, and they're just out there. This is one of those kind of, like, humor that didn't land type things to me, and I was just like, I don't get this choice. There are some real random choices that don't work well, that's going to the, the humor aspect of it, they kind of, like... <sighs> They do a good job of tying to movies that you know and putting like little bits of that stuff in there. But then tied in with that, there's a lot of choices where you're just like, why? Like, I don't I don't understand why we're doing this right now. So I don't know if it was a crunch time issue where they had to get the script done in a certain amount of time or what. Uh, there's some fun practical effects, but it's mixed with some wonky CGI. Uh, and that's for the film in general. Uh, certain ones have better CGI than others when it is used, but the practical effects, for the most part, I think are pretty good. Uh, they're certainly fun. They do a good job of having a good time with those, but happens a lot. You know, CGI can look pretty wonky. Uh, there's a pretty funny reveal in this one uh, that just about everyone, I think, is going to end up appreciating, especially if you've seen the first Scare Package. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can watch this film having not seen the first one, but I would not recommend that. It's way more enjoyable having seen the first one. Um, way more enjoyable having seen the first one, I'll say that. Uh, so, so, yeah, there's a cool reveal. I hope people enjoy that one. 
The pacing isn't the greatest, uh, and that's mainly because of the humor issues that don't end up landing. I even wrote down that it feels like there's like inside jokes thrown in there that the audience is not in on. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's weird. Obviously, that's my biggest hang up with the film is the, the humor not landing enough. Um, there's one particular line in this one that's delivered by a particular person that made my day. I uh, really enjoyed it. I think a lot of people are also going to have the same reaction. I was like kind of giddy with joy when it happened and so much so that I had to watch it again. Yeah, uh, like that. And I do quite like the ending of this one. I think they did a good job kind of wrapping everything up. It, it's a little, it's good in the beginning. In the middle, it starts to like feel like it's falling apart a little bit. And then it grabs itself back together, gets it together, and has a strong finish. So start to finish, not excellent, but overall pretty good. So I'm going to give this segment itself three and a half out of five stars. So three and a half stars for the Rad Chad's Revenge. Now the next segment. This was the first of the actual like segments after the wraparound. Welcome to the 90s. This one's written and directed by Alexandra Barreto, who's just done short films prior to this. this you know, still a short film here. Uh, this one establishes a parody premise pretty immediately. I'm not really going to tell you what it is because I, don't, I just don't want to give that stuff away. I don't want to give you synopses of these shorts just because it, it gives too much away about them, and I'd rather you go in blind with it. So anyway, the Welcome to the 90s set establishes a really nice kind of parody premise immediately. You'll get it. You'll definitely get it. And it's very playful. I like the playful nature of the film. Uh, it's full of playful camera work and playful sounds to go along with it, letting you know it's not taking itself seriously, obviously, because this is scare package. So yeah, shouldn't be taking itself too seriously. The acting in it is stiff and awkward, but I do believe that was an intentional choice. If it wasn't an intentional choice, it works in its favor unintentionally. But I do believe it was an intentional choice. Because uh, at first I was like, oh man, this acting. And then I was like, oh yeah, this is intentional because it's really playing into the humor of it. I did think the humor for the most part in this one was good. Um... There are lots of horror movie tropes of a certain kind that get covered in this one, and I think they covered them pretty well. They kind of integrated them relatively well. And then the in, the ending's just okay. I wasn't huge on the ending. I felt like the ride getting there was, was a decent buildup, and then it just kind of like, after that it was kind of like, eh, it's okay, we just ended. It does kind of end, feel like it's it didn't have enough time to like really get going. So, uh, welcome to the 90s out of five stars, giving it three stars. Still solid. Then there was The Night He Came Back Again, Part 6, The Night She Came Back. That's the whole title, very long title. Uh, this one's directed by Anthony Cousins, who had just done short films before. It's written by John Carsco, who had done Hunting Buddies in Harm's Way and Teacher's Lounge. This one has a strong tie back to the first film. A real strong tie back to the first film. And uh, people who have seen the first one will be like, oh, yep, I know what's going on right here. Uh, it takes a bit to get going. It is pretty slow to like really get going, which is one of my biggest issues with this particular one, is the pacing is pretty off because it's just... You don't have a whole lot of time with something like this, and you need to make everything count. And it just really felt like it, it was wasting too much time to like get things going. There is a good reveal in it all, though. This isn't one that you're just like, oh, this one's just bad. It's not the case. There's a good reveal to it. Once it gets going, it's interesting enough. I do like the story, but the pacing and how much of the humor doesn't land ends up turning me off on this one. Although there are some good things, like I said. So overall, I can't hit this one too poorly. So out of five stars, I'm giving it two and a half. So I'm pretty in the middle on it because there are some nice things like the reveal in it and this when the story gets going, but the humor doesn't do a great job and the pacing's not good. Okay, then the next segment is called Special Edition, written and directed by Jed Shepard, who also did Host and Dash Cam. Uh, this one looks and feels like an A24 film. Obviously, that's a big compliment. I love A24 films. They look amazing. Jed Shepard did an outstanding job, outstanding job with the look of this segment. 
Uh, I was in awe. It feels like it is kind of separate from the film in a few ways. One being the way it looks and two being the actual tone of it because it's not actually funny. That's the weird thing. Like all of them are funny. There's a little bit of humor, a little bit of humor in this one. But for the most part, it kind of plays as like a straight up horror short. It's good though. Like it's legitimately good. So I'm not mad at it being in there. The dialogue really stands out in this, and it's really enhanced by the delivery of the dialogue by the actresses. The actresses do a great job. Some people familiar, you know, if you are familiar with other stuff that Jed Shepard's done, you will know who some of these actresses are. Uh, so it's cool to see him working with familiar faces, and they do a great job, as they have done in the past. They do an excellent job. So the acting is wonderful. The dialogue is really well written. The story is well written. It looks really good. Cinematography, stylish, to go along with the, you know, the nice look, nice A24-ish look. And the real, the story does keep you engaged enough. Uh, the only big thing is it's not funny, so it really does feel kind of out of place being in this with, you know, in a scare package too. Like I said, there is a little bit of humor to it, mainly in just the beginning. Or maybe I missed the humor in it, but if I did, it just didn't land for me, but... Um, it is good though. I, I did enjoy this one. So out of five stars, this one's getting three and a half stars. Then the last segment, and this one is called We're So Dead. This one's directed by Rachel Wiggins, uh, who was involved with Dead House Dark and is going to be working on the new Wolf Creek film, which I believe is in production right now. Um, I've had the, the pleasure of actually speaking with Rachel. She's a very nice person. I think she's an, a big time up and comer. I think she's given enough time is going to become a pretty big deal. She is great at style with films, and it really does show with her segment. Uh, this one's written by uh, Aaron B. Kuntz and Cameron Burns, who also did Camera Obscura, Scare Package, the first one, and The Pale Door. Um, this one moves at a great pace. It probably has the best pacing of all the segments. It feels like there's really no fat on the... There, like, there's no fat in there. It was all trimmed down, so... Keeping a good, succinct script was big with this one. And it just moves. That's the other thing. Great pacing. It just moves. Um, the humor, music, and camera work all come together to make it feel extremely fun. It's got like a bit of a playful nature to the camera work. The acting's really well done for the most part. They, it has good humor that really hits. And the music is really good and engaging. So all those things kind of wrap together to work. Uh, the camera at times, though, is overly shaky. This is one of the things that just bothers me. I know there are certain people who watch film, and they just don't notice those types of things. If that's you, great. That's awesome. But there are moments where it's overly shaky, really should not be, in my opinion. It should be a bit more steady, because they're like shots that are kind of like straight on. They're not like following action or anything, but it doesn't detract from the overall good aspect of the film. Uh, it takes a turn that I actually did not see coming, but I ended up liking. Unfortunately, the story is good, but unfortunately, the very end of it, like the last shot for the most part, well, not the last shot, but in the last segment, there's a really bad-looking CGI moment. Like, bad-looking CGI moment. And I was like, hmm, I just wouldn't have done that. To be honest, I, I just would have cut that, honestly, from it because it just did not look good. But it doesn't spoil the fact that it had great pacing, had good humor, good acting. It was a fun story, very original feeling. Well, original when also not being original because it, you know, all these, all these are kind of like referencing known horror films. So out of uh, five stars, I'm going to give War So Dead three and a half stars as well. So if, you know, three of the segments got three and a half stars, one got three and one got 2.5. So overall, 3.2 stars for this. As a sequel, I think that's pretty good. I don't remember what I gave the first scare package when I reviewed it, but I think probably somewhere around like three and a half, four stars. So it's not a big drop um, and I enjoyed it enough and I think there's a lot of fun to be had with it and I would watch it again. That's the other thing. The biggest, the best thing about it is it ends strong. It has a really strong finish. So if you're not feeling it coming up to the end, stick with it because there is a good payoff, in my opinion. So this is the point where I say I would like to hear your opinions on this film. If you've seen it, go ahead and put it in the comments. 
We can do spoilers in the comments, that's fine. Uh, tell me if you liked it, hated it in between, and give me like a sentence or two letting me know why that is. Also, do me a favor, hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you can, and you can, just hit the notification bell button, because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing at least four a week at this point, which I think is a good amount. But regardless, thank you very much for checking out this video, and until next time, keep it brutal.